whether you're a professional filmmaker or you're just getting started, learning how to capture the beautiful world around you is a skill you must not miss out on. And so in this video, I want to sit down and talk to you exactly about that. How to capture and document your travels in the most authentic and beautiful way possible. Just like any shoot, planning ahead is key. When it comes to filming in places that are unpredictable, one thing that you can have control over is knowing when the sun rises and sets. It's one of the most important things because it allows you to plan ahead and know what time you have to wake up at, what time you have to be at a certain place by, how long you have until the sun disappears, and depending on the lighting conditions, depending on the kind of mood you're looking for, it sometimes helps you plan ahead and know what time certain key elements of day are going to be around for you to be able to film in the best lighting conditions. An app that I personally love using is SunQuest. It allows me to not only see where and and when the sun will set and rise in any given location around the world but it also uses your camera and shows you an exact map of where the sun will be at any given stage of the day especially when I'm filming in valleys or in, in the mountains and knowing how long it will take for the sun to pass behind the mountain or how long I have until it gets hidden away by certain mountains because depending on your elevation different kind of sunlight affects it and knowing that allows me to pre-plan ahead and know what I'm going to be capturing at any given moment and how much time I have before this golden light disappears. Having a list of locations that you're going to be visiting whilst on the go filming is so important. It allows you to plan your route and see whether some spots can take longer to get to or if they have a certain time that you have to be at them. Each location is unique and is affected by its surroundings in a different way. And in order to be able to capture it in its most beautiful form, you have to plan ahead and know how long it might take to get there. How long do you have in this certain place? Because you might want to film during sunrise or sunset and having a list like that also allows you to plan ahead with what kind of equipment or gear you might want to use and what you might want to do once you arrive to these places my personal favorite way of finding new locations to go to is just by scrolling on instagram and looking at what other local photographers are sharing because at the end of the day they know more than you they know places that aren't on the map they know places that are harder to get to but much more rewarding and at the end of the day isn't that the point to show a unique perspective of the places you're traveling to and lastly the importance of finding inspiration to what you were doing before any trip sitting down for an hour or two just to watch travel videos that people have made whether it's about the same destination or different destination will inevitably and subconsciously help you create the best video because you are going to pull some sort of information, some sort of inspiration from these videos that you will apply to yours and make your videos stand out more than they ever have before. Here is where you get to be creative. Come up with your vision, your own unique identity in a visual form and express it to the world. And I guess this, this is my favorite part. The easiest way to draw any viewer's attention is with the use of beautiful and simple composition. In fact, nearly all of my videos are shot with the same composition rule in mind, and that is the rule of thirds. So allow me to explain. Imagine breaking your video frame into a grid of nine equal parts, much like a tic-tac-toe board. This rule encourages you to place key elements of your scene along those grid lines. By doing so, you not only create a more dynamic and balanced composition, but you also draw your viewer's attention to the most important aspects of the shot. When we place our subjects on the top horizontal line, we allow them to be a lot more closer and intimate to the camera, which is a lot more relatable to the viewers, and it brings them in closer and draws them in to the scene. Whereas if we do that in the contrary and we place our subject on the bottom third, it gives a lot of space to, to the image and allows it to look and feel much bigger and more grand than it actually is. And with that negative space, it allows us to have room to breathe and to take everything in that's being seen and shown. It's not something that you can just easily speed run through. It's one of those rules where you're gonna have to trial and error everything to see what sticks and to see what you like the most and what suits your kind of style of filmmaking. With any beautiful composition, we always need lights. However, as we're traveling, we don't have access to carrying massive lights around with us to create depth. 
but there is one workaround that will nearly always work, and that is using backlighting. And what that simply is, is placing the sun behind your subject so that you can film on the shadow side of them to create natural depth, natural shadows, and a shot that is more dynamic than anything else if you were filming directly with them facing towards the sun. If you're like me, and oftentimes find yourself working with people that aren't professional actors or models, sometimes getting them to understand your vision can be a little bit difficult. And this is where a little bit of practice as a director comes into play. I think everyone has their own unique take and approach on how they relay information to the people they work with. But something that helps me and works for me is usually just acting it out, showing them exactly what I want to see and then allowing them to interpret it in their way and how they want to help you bring that vision to life. The final step to any travel film that you will ever make is the post-production. It can be the best and worst stage of everything because it can be the point where you come home with all this incredible footage that you finally shot and you're placing it all together and it's just all working and you're making this video that you've always wanted to make. But it can also be a little bit heartbreaking because you might come back and realize the story that you shot just makes absolutely no sense. And so all you're left with is an abundance of footage and a short limited amount of time to figure out how to make something out of it. It's one of those things where you have to keep fiddling around with it, keep playing and messing around until eventually you see something stick. And once that thing sticks, it's about constantly staying at it until it molds into your first draft. Send your friends your first draft, get their opinions, ask them for advice and see if they have any better suggestions. I won't touch on the specific nitty gritty bits of how to edit a travel video because quite frankly there's no rule and there's no shortcut or cheats to how to do it. You just have to sit there and edit. Filmmaking takes years and years of practice and on top of that years and years of failing to understand the principles that make great movies, great films. Any YouTubers, directors, cinematographers that you admire, they've all made terrible videos in the past. They've failed numerous, numerous times, but it's the constant motivation to keep at it, to keep getting better, and to keep learning from your mistakes is what's gonna set you apart. And it's important to remember that with each fail you have to learn to grow, to get better, and just to enjoy this journey that you're on. Because if you're not having fun, then your videos will never go anywhere. So enjoy the process, enjoy the fun of traveling, and just make beautiful videos that are important to you. And then the rest, well, that'll follow with time.